So the back half, okay? This is the second half of the presentation. If there is a new speaker for the second half, you must edify who that second person is. For example, here's another thing. Let's say that you work in a customer service or a call center. Let's say that's your job. How many of you have ever been in a situation where somebody wants to speak to your boss? Now look at this. Listen to me carefully. If you've been in a situation where somebody wants to speak to your boss, let me teach you how to handle that, not in defense, but in offense. You ready? This is what you do. You edify your supervisor. Takes you off of defense, puts you on offense. So, for example, somebody's upset with you because you're not getting the job done, and they say, oh, let's speak to your supervisor. And you say, okay, hold. How many of you have done this? Okay? You don't say that. This is what you say. You say, oh, I would be glad to. In fact, you are so going to enjoy your time with Mr. Mark Smith. He is an amazing supervisor. He is absolutely going to take care of you. And I apologize that I have only been able to get you so far. I really have given him a best shot. But I trust you. I'm going to put you in great hands with Mr. Smith. He is a very busy man, however. But I'm going to go ahead and just sneak you right in directly to his office to make sure that you get the kind of service that it is that you need. Honor, edify, what did you just do for your boss? You made his job easier. What's that make you look like? Because when that call gets passed to your boss, what does it make you look like? Hello? No, no, no. If, if, in that way, you look like an asset. But the other way, you look like part of the word. If it's the first example where the customer says, I want to speak to your supervisor. Okay, hold the line. Makes you look incompetent. Makes you on the defense, which makes your manager think that you did something wrong. So in this case, what does it do? You switch the table. You're now on the offense. You say, you know what? I would love to, and you will so enjoy working with Mr. Smith. He is a very busy man, but I'm going to make sure that I can go ahead and get you directly to him. And I thank you so much for your time, and I apologize that I wasn't able to get you to the fullness of service that you were after. But I'm confident that Mr. Smith is going to give it his best shot to be able to do that for you. We really do value your business, and we value you as a client. Let me go ahead and transfer you now. Hold. You get on the phone with Mr. Smith. Hey, Mr. Smith, I really do apologize. I know you're very busy. I've given my best shot with this last client, and I have told him that you really are an amazing person and that he will enjoy working with you. I've made sure and let him know what an incredible manager that you are and what a blessing it is that I get to work with you. And so he's on line five and ready to talk to you. Do you look like the incompetent blank? No, you look, you did your best. You honored your boss. Are you guys catching this? Look at you guys. I wish y'all could see what I'm seeing. So many of you are starry eyed, right? Are like, wow, I never thought of that. How many of us have gotten defensive with a client before? And what happens when you get defensive with the client? You lose the client. What did you lose when you lost the client? What did you lose? Seed. You lost a seed that had the potential to become a what? Orchard. Do you understand? Cool. So always edify the person that you're passing the baton to. Okay? Always edify. This is so good. Okay. All right, so here's the second half of the presentation. So if it's a new speaker or a new person, or if it's the manager that's taking the next part of the call, what do you do? ID, an introduction. So Mr. Smith, in this case, would do what? How many of you are the Mr. Smith? <laughs> awesome. So you're the Mr. Smith. You're the back half of the presentation. So what do you do? You start with an ID. Okay, an ID. So in this case, if it's one-on-one -on -one with a client like that, you're going to form that client totally fresh. What I have seen when I get on the phone with the supervisor, they are defensive. They're mad that they have to talk to you, which infuriates me even more. 
and I'm out of here and I want my money back. You understand? But if that back half person, the baton that was tossed, now that person starts with an intro. So, hi, John, how's it going? Well, it's not going very good. I'm so sorry to hear that. So where are you from? Really, how long have you been from there? So are you married? How many kids you got? Are you hearing me? What do you do? Come on, 60 seconds you can form somebody. 60 seconds you can form somebody. Totally. Now, client is nowhere near as ticked off as they were. Now they know you care and you value them. And you did not say, I care and I value you. You're showing that you care and that you value them. So now, that's the ID. You're making that introduction. Oh, really? I have two kids too. Awesome. Make a bridge. Then say, I completely understand where you're coming from and how you must feel right now. And I truly apologize for anything that our company has done that has made you feel this way. Will you accept my apology right now? Now, what can we do to make you happy? That's the back half. Okay, so let's go back to a live presentation. Did this help any of you? Okay, good. I think I'm going to be in trouble after this workshop. We have customer service center company calling. We have real estate companies calling. Insurance companies calling. Can you, like, help our people talk to people? Every time you lose a customer, you lost an orchard. You didn't lose a customer. You didn't lose 100 bucks. You lost an orchard. An, hello? An orchard. That's a huge amount that you lost. Do you know that it costs seven times more money to get a new customer than it does to keep the old one? You've got to build relationships and keep those relationships. Okay, next in a presentation... Uh, for the back half part of it. This is for your home-based business owners and a couple other industries can use this, but let me give you this. Some I used to start my presentation with was, if money was no object, what would your life look like? How many of you would drive different cars? How many of you would live in a different house? How many of you would travel more? These are questions to connect. Again, it's building bridges, time to find out who your audience is and what matters to them. By the way, I did that with you yesterday with the dream circle. Right? Cool. All right, next. You wouldn't do that in a presentation, by the way. In one of your presentations for what you did, it doesn't apply. Okay, then you present your compensation. And this applies to interviews or whatever. Compensation structure, those of you in a home-based business, you would, you know, map out your compensation plan. You don't need to get into all the, the graphic details about it. You just need to give an overview of it, just a simple overview of it. What does that look like if you are trying to get a big account? You're trying to have an account picked up for you. There is a compensation plan in that presentation. If you are in a situation where you are an account rep, or you run a company that gets new accounts. You always have to come from where the prospect is coming from. What's in it for me is what's in the mind of the prospect. Do you hear me? What's in it for me? You always wanna lead in the what's in it for me factor that takes the eye off of the cost. If you build the what's in it for me part, the eye is off of the cost. So, for example, yesterday I was talking about my interview with J.C. Penney's. And I said to him, I don't know anything about this, but I am teachable and I am coachable and I will do whatever you tell me to do. So if you're willing to teach me, I promise you I will be the best that you've ever had. Ignorantly, I spoke to the what's in it for him factor. I didn't know what I was doing. I know now what I did. <laughs> and I know now what I'm doing, but I didn't know then. I sold him what he wanted without realizing it. Okay? I did the same on those first couple of calls. You know, when I explained how I did that yesterday in the core report methodology, I sold them what they wanted without even realizing that I did that. Okay?
no matter what it is that you're marketing, you never tie it to what's in it for you. You never, ever, ever lead with what you want. So if you wanted to gain a big account, you don't go to them with, hey, I think this would be great if we work together because I think we can benefit from each other. And because I think that what you have is going to help me get to where I want to go. Don't ever, ever lead with that nonsense. You have got to always lead with what matters in the compensation point or what's in it for me. Please wrap your brain around this. They don't care about what's in it for you. They could care less about it. In fact, if they knew some people are so crooked and corrupt inside, if they knew there was something in it for you, they don't want to do anything with it anyway. Because their heart is plagued with blackness and jealousy, they don't want to see you win. So if you keep all the focus on what is in it for them, you're safe always. Do you hear me? What's in it for them? This is the what's in it for me factor. That's the part you have to focus on when you're talking about a compensation structure or a joint venture deal. The focus always has to be in that direction. Hear me out. You really, really have to come from that viable place of what is best for your client, not what is best for you. If you can always wrap your mind around that, and it is a struggle to do that, because from this day forward, you're going to be fighting the battle of ego. And thank God you know now you have one. Because you were losing against it prior to yesterday. But now that you've seen it, you're like, oh, I know what that is, and I will not bow down automatically anymore. Do you hear what I'm saying? Once you see it, once it's revealed, then you can resist. When you're in ignorance, you don't know what's happening to you. You're just down. Do you understand? But when you can see it, you recognize it and say it to flee. Well, this is something that you will battle for the rest of your life. And you will win. You will be victorious over it. One step at a time. Inch by inch. It's a cinch. Now, here's the deal. You've got to get yourself out of the mentality of what's in it for me personally. You always have to switch it around. Always flip the tables and come from the perspective of the prospect on the other side of the table. And put yourself in their shoes and say, if it was me, what would I want? If it was me sitting on the other side of the table, what would make me want to do this with them? Do you understand? Don't lead with your agenda. You have to lead with their agenda. How do you find out their agenda? Ask questions. Ask questions, okay? Because they are thinking the entire time you're talking, what's in it for me? 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 That is the current culture we live under. That's not what the culture was 100 years ago. It's not even what the culture was even 50 years ago. It is the current culture today. It's a self-service kingdom of self world that we live in today. And when you know that, you have to learn how to play by those rules. And those rules are great. If you're all selfish, cool, I'm going to lead you with your selfishness. Did you hear me? God knows what to bait the hook with. Okay. Okay. For those of you, okay, and then this applies to, this applies to an interview. Training. Next is training. So the compensation, then the training. If you're hiring somebody in a company, finding someone that's going to work for you, you're going to talk about the training. Okay, next is testimonials again, testimonials about the compensation, testimonials about your insurance package that so-and-so used last year when they were going through heart problems and it saved them $35,000. Did you hear what I said? Most of you go, well, we have insurance. We have these benefits. If you don't sell them, they don't see the value in them. So you tell stories about what you have to offer. You tell stories about the compensation structure or the benefits package or whatever. Tell stories about how people have used those things. The dental program, the vision program, or whatever it is that you guys have to offer. The bonuses. You know, our company bonuses aggressively. In fact, so-and-so got a bonus that was equal to whatever. Or actually, maybe you're not legally allowed to say the amount. But just say they got a huge bonus because they were diligent. They work with a spirit of excellence. And the people that get the biggest bonus in our company are do X. So you tell them that. So what's that doing? Frame in their mind for what? There is reward if I'm willing to work. Okay? All right, cool. All righty. Next. 
is the close. Okay, final point on your presentation is a close. And you always got to close. Always got to close. Always got to close. You cannot not close. I see presentations all the time. People don't close. Presentations because people don't know they're doing a presentation. <laughs> but you have to close. Whether it's one-on-one -on -one and you're marketing a house or trying to get a listing or a loan, okay? You sell loans or you're trying to get a loan. There's always a close. A date, an appointment for the follow-up, okay? There's always a close. You do hair, you do nails, you do massage. You need to close them on the next appointment. Do you hear me? And if your time with them, the half an hour, the hour, the hour and a half, the three hours, however long it takes for you to get their service, you are doing a presentation. Hello? And there has to be a close. And in the presentation, there has to be what? Testimonials. Did you hear me? Testimonials. Even if you're a massage therapist, while you're massaging, you're telling some stories. Makes them go, really? Wow. Gosh, I probably should come back again. Amen. <laughs> Do you know how many thousands of massage therapists out there that are starving? Always trying to get new business because they don't know how to keep the current business? Every time you're doing your thing, you are presenting. And every presentation has testimonials. Every presentation has edification. Every presentation has a close. Okay? The close could be something like this. For those of you in a home-based business, the close, my close was, no matter what we say, there are three types of people. The first type person is the one that says thanks, but no thanks. We thank you for your time. We do, however, encourage you to go ahead and explore our product line because we know you need to feel better, look younger, and live longer. Number two is the person who needs to think about it. And I understand completely where you come from. If you are a real, true, think-it-over person, we encourage you to get our think-it-over kit. It's only $35. And that's if you're not that kind of person that says, I'll think it over and take the brochure and throw it in the trash. That if you really are one that wants to do their due diligence and you want to go ahead and test drive the vehicle before you purchase it, we encourage you to do that and try our product as well as the think it over kit. Third type person is the one we're looking for. It's the one that says, yes, I see it. It makes sense. How do I get started? I'm ready now. Get with the person who invited you out. Or if it's a one-on-one -on -one thing, which one are you? One, two, or three? And they will tell you. Okay, there has to be a close. You have to wrap up what you're doing. All right. Okay, so there you go. Good. Awesome. That completes the presentation part of the core profit skills.